Hi guys, this is uh, Tony Leonard sitting in for ZBrush Live on this Saturday, uh, as it were, on October 20th, 2018. Uh, I'm going to get things set up here and start streaming in just a second. just want to make sure that all my systems are go. Give me one second. Started my machine, trying to get things set back up. You know how it is, you gotta reboot, reopen the applications. Give me one second. So I hope everyone is having a good weekend. Uh, do let me know. Uh, hit me up in the chat. Let me know that you guys are there. And we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to kind of continue talking about a few things from uh, last time around uh, when I streamed. Uh, fortunately, I've been really busy, so I'm not on as often as uh, I'd like. But um, uh, I thought I would give you guys sort of a rundown on a few thing, different things that I've been doing uh, since last time. Um, so, without much ado, let me see if I can flip over here. And there we go. There's me. Take off. Oh, whoops! I actually, want that. There we go. All right. So you should be able to see me, and you should be able to see uh, my screen. Yeah. Let me know if I sound all right to everybody. I'm still trying to figure out a few settings that are optimal for uh, streaming over OBS uh, and stream. But uh, you know, uh, let me know how everything comes through. I imagine it's okay. But uh, if you, if you have a problem hearing me or anything, maybe I can adjust my mic or anything like that. Cool. Sounds good. Cool. 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 All right. So last time I was around uh, on stream, I was working on some buildings, uh, just like uh, practical props, uh, low poly, you know, just uh, trying to build up a base or a composition onto a 3D grid. Uh, I think I would kind of take that a little bit further uh, as an example. Uh, and I'm going to try a few things using some of the same similar tools. Uh, but I'm also going to try a few other things. Um, one is I'm going to sort of integrate my use of ZBrush uh, along with Blender uh, a little bit. So if you see me pop over here, uh, more than likely, you know, I'll work out a few different like little small procedural things that I do in Blender. Um, namely to use some uh, advanced Boolean uh, cuts that I like to use using hard ops. Uh, and also there are new tools within Blender that I've started to use um, that I wanted to share with you guys and that is using KitOps new uh, from the same makers of uh, HardOps uh, Master Xeon 1001 and also a gentleman by the name of Chip Walters have put together a really cool tool for Blender called KitOps it's like a, an advanced uh, sort of Dyna cutter or cutter uh, boolean cutter type of uh, application 
uh, where you could do some advanced Boolean uh, operations in batch. Uh, and that's really cool. Uh, I'd love to show you some of that, uh, some of that stuff. So if I have time, so I'll, I'll jump into that. Uh, and also maybe uh, having a rendered look at things and how to do sort of a basic setup for any type of prop using uh, Octane. So if you've, uh, you know, maybe subscribed or purchased Octane, if you have like a Pascal card or higher, uh, I might show you guys just a sort of basic setup um, of how to view things inside of Octane, uh, which the standalone itself I've been using quite a bit, a lot myself, and really, really like it. Um, this doesn't look like much, of course, when you open it, uh, know that you probably, whatever nodes that you set up, or even if you're in a blank state, or if you have uh, a file that you've saved into your local DB, um, like, you know, various nodes that I find of interest, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just copy them, uh, and then, or highlight them actually in the node editor, and you're able to save those chained threads, or threads of nodes, uh, as one individual piece into your local DB. So that's kind of uh, the vein of things of how I've, I've been working, you know, like uh, I build things or compose things in ZBrush, uh, sculpt them up at times, um, you know, use the Z modeler to probably do a lot of poly editing. Uh, and then that poly editing is supported by use of uh, using Blender. Uh, in a lot of ways because, you know, once I take an OBJ or something that, you know, like I, I merge a tool from ZBrush, I can bring it over to Blender, I can hit, you know, Alt-W and bring out my box cutter, and I can start doing some really cool, you know, um, advanced techniques. Like, uh, if I just take, like, something like this, uh, oops, sorry, got those butterfingers, there we go, uh, and then I... Boolean of, or uh, bevel. Of course, I can do something like this. Uh, and I can grab these, bevel these. But I can also do a lot of other advanced cuts, um, like using a uh, box cutter. So just as an example, I hit Alt-W on the keyboard, which actually activates the add-on into Blender. Uh, and then something like, uh, I hit the D key for the D menu. Uh, Oops, actually I'm in edit mode, so I don't, don't want to do that. Let's come out of edit mode by hitting tab, so we're in an object mode. Uh, things to remember about Blender is there are two very different modes. Uh, one editing, which of course is uh, hitting tab and working with the polys, verts, and edges. Uh, and then hitting tab and working with it as an object. So right now I'm going to actually work with it as an object. Uh, and then what I can do is, if I wanted to look at this... Oops, sorry. There we go. In a gridded view, straight orthographic, right? And I'm looking from the top. Uh, I'm just going to take this and rotate it just a bit so that we're lined up straight, right? On axis, should be fairly straight. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll take and hit that D menu again. Uh, and there are two different modes of working with the tool like this, and it's really cool because you can work destructively or non destructively. Uh, it all depends on basically which modifier that you want to go with. Uh, destructive would take a literal cut out of the object. Uh, say, for example, if I cut here, oops, actually that might be a little bit off axis. I have to make sure that, of course, um, the object is selected. And then, you know, I can go maybe top view and make a cut. And this will cut all the way through but beyond cutting all the way through. And of course, you know, I, I just literally cut a Boolean, you know, piece, just snapped it right off, sliced it, and it is gone, right? So there are no real modifiers. I mean, it's already applied and done a modifier, I believe. Um, if so, I can hit the control tilde. Yeah, so I know that there's actually no modifiers that are actually present. It's already run and been done. And then I can, of course, take and do another cut I'm not sure why, but this one, for some reason, it seems to be off axis. Ah, I know why it is. Because basically, control A, need to refix that location. Oops. Uh, control A again for rotation. Oops. And then scale. So with that, my axis should be fixed out. And then now let's try it. So D, box, right? And there we go. Our cut is straight. So I'm not going to worry about exactly the space in between here and my origin point, or 
the end point and the space where I want to end. Uh, I'm just going to be sort of general, right? So I'm going to take this and cut down, and then I'm going to hit tab so I can pause it. And with tab with pause it, you know, it, it actually like just freezes the box, uh, sets up a little, you know, uh, these little dots here on the corner, which basically are your points or binding box, sort of like points of adjustment. But, you know, I can uh, kind of come in here and sort of design my cut the way I want. So if I'm imagining, like, uh, last week you guys saw me working with Z Modeler, and I'm, I'm actually going to work with it again, but I just want to cut up uh, a piece in Box Cutter really quick and use it as sort of like a, a base. Because it's really fun to think of things, uh, and, it, and especially, you know, like when I draw, I literally draw like 2D analog draw on paper or sketch, um, a lot of times what I do is I try to imagine or think of objects inside of a 3D box already. Right, so it, it you know thinking of the dimensionality of something, uh, and then basing sort of my silhouette or cuts off of that 3D space, that 3D box space, right? So with something like this, I'm just going to come on the edges and make me make another bevel, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as sort of a cutting object into this, and uh, yeah, that should be fine, and then I'm just going to double click on it. And of course, when you're using this add-on, anytime you have any questions about uh, help items or shortcut keys, you can just simply right mouse button click here on the help, and it will give you all of the shortcut keys for basic commands using uh, box cutter. Right? Uh, you can get box cutter. I should add uh, just to give a shout out to Master Zeon there and his team for their wonderful creation. Uh, go ahead and dig it up but I'll type uh, where do you can get it um, of course you know blender itself you always want to I mean it is absolutely free uh, it's an open source application for 3d uh, not to uh, steal any time away from ZBrush of course but you know you can of course grab it you know just by going to the blender bot and getting like the most current uh, build you know, or download latest builds of seven point or uh, two point seven nine, and also the new two point eight EV, which has, actually has some really cool real, real time rendering effects. But I encourage everybody to you know maybe jump into these and check them out because there are some feature sets that are coming forthcoming that you could add to your uh, ZBrush workflow um, and do some really amazing things. So um, it, you know, it, it, of late. A lot, I know, uh, sometimes I take departures from ZBrush, even though this is a ZBrush-centric uh, um, stream, of course, but it's always nice to introduce other things for people to use to empower them to even do more with ZBrush, right, uh, beyond it. So uh, there, there's always a role, um, I think, for one or the other, yeah? So, the, you know, I'm just going to take a, and do like a few cuts here. Actually, this, I'm going to make a box tab and hold it uh, and then I'm going to use my rotation uh, and let's see if I can oops that's a, an X let's do Z no not Z Y there we go so Y at about 45 degrees uh, and of course I can move this around a little bit I want to basically take a sort of a 45 degree cut angle out of this chunk and I'm going to hit spacebar and just sort of line it to where I want it Right, and so even if it's off a few increments, either left or right from this view that you know we're looking at, what I can do is I can go ahead and apply it, and just to make sure that my symmetry is on, I'm going to hit Alt X, and basically there are some modifiers here for symmetry. So I'm going to use straight up symmetry for uh, uh, straight up symmetry modifier and box cutter, uh, just to make sure that both sides are equal. There we go. And of course, uh, if you tap into edit mode, you can see that all of these uh, are straight up, uh, you know, geometry, poly geometry, right? So in a lot of ways, you know, I could take something like this and toss it into ZBrush uh, and then use the Z modeler tools to even further um, go with the design, right? Uh, and of course, you know, just good poly flow or fixing, I think uh, a lot of these things have uh, you know, probably ingons in it, and sometimes ingons don't display correctly between applications. So, 
Um, you may have a little bit of poly editing to do uh, if you can fix your polys or you could probably just uh, when you save it out be sure to export and you know if you did a uh, wave front or something like that um, the, the shape is not a total loss right so because we could always go and apply the modifiers these are all of the OB, OBJ export uh, options that you can do so selection uh, I like to use uh, apply modifiers include edges write normals include UVs a lot of this stuff is pretty basic uh, but there's triangulate faces and there's also polygroups so the blender does respect polygroups so um, it's a good thing to probably check this if you have a lot of different uh, planner faces in your design or something like that uh, and you want to hold on to those areas uh, you can just save it out with polygroups and life will be better it will, I promise Yeah, 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 modeling in different ways, exactly. That's exactly it. I mean, um, being able to take and, and use all of these tools together uh, is uh, sort of the feather in the cap, I should say. Uh, test. Let's do this. Test. CP live. Demo. Okay, so I'm just going to save a little test file, OBJ, just to see what it looks like, right? And then I'll come back to ZBrush. Now, because I triangulated faces, it might be a little bit difficult to work with uh, in ZModeler, because uh, you would ha probably have to do a lot of either retopology or Z remeshing, uh, perhaps. Um, but let me see if I can just bring it back to ZBrush and work it. Yeah. So I'm gonna close prefs. And uh, something uh, very cool that Mike Pavlovich uh, mentioned that actually is sort of a, one of those back in the brain things, but yes, uh, very cool when you work with other geometry that you save out as an OBJ from someplace else. Simply starting from a PolyMesh 3D uh, star, the PolyMesh 3D star, which is uh, built into ZBrush. If you lay it down, um, Versus just going from scratch and dropping an object, uh, any of the other objects, this one itself is a PolyMesh 3D, so there's no reason to go back and say make PolyMesh 3D, so I can immediately just import. Uh, got a lot of stuff here. Where did it go? Where did it go? Come on. Really need to clean up this computer. So much stuff. Get to work and pile up files. Let's see here. Did not save. Should have saved. Should have saved on the desktop even. Ah, here we go. Found it. There we go. So it comes in and pretty much if I hit, you know, I mean it looks pretty clean, right? Uh, but if I hit uh, polyframes, show my polyframes by hitting shift F, you can see that this is what happens. This is how it solves a lot of this and some of this you could probably fix and just uh, make it quadded out um, if I had taken the time I could go back uh, to ZBrush and of course or excuse me go back to Blender rather uh, and I could probably join some of these ver verts and solve some of this geometry that, that would probably be best right so you know taking out for example hitting control tab going to vertex joining or selecting any two uh, verts in, in Blender, it's pretty easy to snap them together. You just uh, select them and hit J on the keyboard, and it will even uh, add extra verts where you cross an, uh, uh, the expanse of a, an edge. Uh, so it's kind of cool. You know, you can actually basically add more geo uh, by adding more faces by joining all of the verts. Yeah. So I'll take this, this, and even while working with um, box cutter, you know, like if I needed to solve or add some things, pretty much this is the kind of method that I would use. Um, I could hit Control R, add in, add in a couple of verts with an edge. I'm actually going to move this edge over, slide it that way. There we go. 
And I'm not worried about being uh, even or doing it necessarily on both sides. I don't need, actually need to do that because I can use, of course, the same modifier that I used before um, in box cutter, of course, using Alt X, which will symmetrize uh, where I tell it. But, uh, oops, not face, vertex. Take these guys, do something like this. And uh, probably need another loop to solve some of these, or at least just close it off. So that, but you know, um, if I want to do this properly, I'd probably keep a lot of these straight, stuff like that. But you know, you could fix it so that you don't have any run ins, uh, because this will obviously be like a, a serious ingot shape. These are quads, of course, and they will, you know, it should be all right, but you know, you do something like this, get the symmetry out, and some of these I'd probably go back and you know, move around, but uh. It's usually something that you could do pretty quick. There we go. Uh, where do I want to go from here? I think I'm going to take this guy, join it with this, then I'll cause that. Put another loop here. Bring that here. Take this, join this with that. And at least that's okay for basic use. Still looks flat on top. I'll Alt X again, kick over that same stuff so I don't have to do any reworking. And then it's just uh, the bottom. Yeah? So, so I'll close this and this, hit join there, and I'll take this guy and this guy, join there. Suppose we can take this, join there, and I could probably do a control R. I'm looking at the bottom of this. Oh, that's gonna be kind of crazy. Maybe. Let's see if it actually does it. Oh, and it does. So all I have to do is just move and manipulate these. They're gonna be a little skewed, but you know, I just I just want to seal it up so it solves and we have no. Um, no crazy stuff as far as like loops. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Let's go from here. Possibly to here. Ah, see, that's too far. Far. Uh, you're gonna have to ask mommy. You're gonna have to ask mommy about that. Guys, you'll have to excuse me. My daughter is trying to hustle me for some uh, M&Ms <laughs> before walking out the door. It's awesome. It will add extroverts. Psych psychologists go wild over this. Really? Mm. Yes, the GOB goes E. I haven't used it very much. Um, like, I think it was, it, when I looked at it, for some reason, it was, like, kind of one-sided, where it would, I think, just shoot your model from ZBrush over, but not in the other way. Versus, like, using Maya, I think uh, the GoZ feature would work as a two-way straight. So you could go from ZBrush to uh, Maya, and vice versa, from Maya back to ZBrush. I think the GOB is sort of an unofficial uh, release plugin, and, and basically, I'm not sure, but I think it only went from ZBrush to Blender. I could be wrong about this, so let me know. I could be wrong. So I'm just going to take this, bring this up a bit, take this guy. But I would be curious in, in knowing and using it, because I haven't tried it yet. I, I looked into it once, and I was like, uh, I wonder if I should use this. And I wasn't sure. So I might have skipped it. So that's not so bad. Maybe we take uh, this guy and this guy, and join that up. This guy, this guy, join that up. And of course, you know, we've got to solve out some things at the bottom here. Uh, I guess we could 
probably kick that side over. Yep. So those mostly look like quads. I think that's all quadded. Yep, 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 yep. And of course the... I ah, see. Yeah, that would be... Those two would be in God. So I need to draw this down somehow. this. That should work. Then I can take this guy and this guy, join it. Uh, this guy and this guy, join it. And that would be at least a little bit more workable. So I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to solve all of the ingons so that, you know, uh, whatever I'm going to do to it, I can at least not have any faces that are going to break apart because uh, if you unless you saved an object as triangulate uh, coming out of uh, something like this um, when you bring it over to zbrush of course there's going to be it, it's going to it's going to probably take out any of the ingon faces and try to replace things with quads and therefore it'll be a little bit difficult to um, solve anything because it, it there might be holes or chunks or you know spikes in the ver uh, like the, the faces might be kind of tweaked out because it's trying to triangulate it somehow to solve it. And so sometimes it just doesn't work out. Um, but for something like this, you know, cool enough. I'll take this and uh, export it. Export it. But there are many other things with box cutter that are great that you can use with something like this. In fact, I could keep, keep going and keep cutting and I have quite a complex object. So. Um, if you're doing something like non-subdivided geometry, uh, ingons or indoor, when you when you triangulate the face of ingons, it's not going to matter as much, and you can still, in a lot of ways, take those faces, uh, and I believe do in ZBrush. Uh, you could take most of these are flat surfaces, right? Even though if they're triangles or what have you, with triangulated faces, that we know. So in polygroups, we could. Uh, group by normal, which will take all of the planar faces and put an actual polygon, you know, polygroup to that that face, and then you could say, you know, uh, merge similar groups, right? So that would mean that you could equalize everything and basically keep the same same groups. And of course, I think if you were to try and uh, z remesh this you could also go up to something like a uh, stroke and do like a da -da 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 -da. open up the curves enter curve functions and then I think by border and polygroup there's no creased edges and I don't think I need border but by polygroup you could take it and you could frame the mesh which means that it'll put a frame in and around all of the more hardened, hardened edges that you would have in something like this, and then you could probably use that as a guide uh, in ZBrush to crank up your curve strength, right? It's probably border in that. Yep. But try it. You know, like a, I think it's sort of a trial and error thing. I think it, it there should be a uh, a curve in and around this edge, but I think for whatever reason, when I merged some of the polygroups that are similar. Uh, it actually took some and actually like the bottom and made it the same. So what I could do is I could just take this and say only that and hit control W, make that an individual polygroup. The top is different. Or actually, you know what? It looks like no, no. Here, actually I'm gonna delete curves for a second. That side's green. Besides that green, this is that face green. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this guy, do that, and this guy. Oops. There we go. And do that, and so that at least I know that the top and bottom are two very different polygroups. Frame the mesh. And the weird thing is that it's hard to tell sometimes if this is actually continuous, but it should be around the edges. I'm gonna do this. Let's see if I can get 
this right. Yeah. Alright. Alright. I think it's there. I think it's just displaying weird for some reason. I'm not sure why. But usually, um, I mean, I've tried this before. I think even I've tried this in here. Um, the same kind of with uh, a lot of our parts that come out of Fusion. But framing it, uh, a lot of times we'll keep it. I'm just going to show you here in the Geometry tab. Uh, going to Modify Topology. Uh, actually, sorry, Z Remesher. Uh, and then just freezing the edges and or groups. Freeze groups. Uh, maybe. And maybe try something like this. Uh, 0 0.5 maybe. Okay. groups that uh, all right let's try it so as you can I think I probably need to toy with this a little bit but as you can see I think there's some probably somehow there are some edges that are missing from this but if you look uh, the solid areas that were outlined with uh, with curves like especially around the top edge I think it didn't work out so good for this area here so I'm gonna have to probably try it again. But usually, you know, when I do a uh, zero measure, it's like a trial and error kind of uh, affair. Uh, just because sometimes I, I I toy with some like weird shapes that have some weird cuts. But generally, this top area stayed flat and true to the curve. And actually, my curve strength I actually forgot to turn it up to 50. So let's go back for a second. Um, I think also if you use zero measure. Uh, or excuse me, the Z modeler. There's actually another way to do this, um, where you could take you know hardened objects, you know where you need to actually you know retopologize things really quick. But you know you have a triangulated mesh, but at least some of the planar safe surfaces are, are pretty straightforward. You know uh, where you have you know just simple uh, straight lines, or you know the object is particularly angular. Uh, a lot of times you can take this and then oh it does go from uh, blender to zbrush and back cool all right well that solves it then i guess i have to maybe go get it i think does he update it there's the, the guy there's like one guy who updates it ah yes there is a fan here actually you know what hold on let me see if i can cut it off You'll have to excuse. I have one big fan and one smaller fan, and I usually point a fan because my corner here where my workstation is, I have two computers running, it gets a little warm, but sometimes it interferes with the audio. But I hope that's better. Ah, uh, unwelded points, eh? Yeah, that might work. Well, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, I think I'm gonna delete. Curve. Let's try it. Uh, I think that's modify topology, yeah. And then weld points. Shouldn't be any holes. And optimize points. And we'll see. Uh, frame mesh. Yeah, for some reason it keeps skipping from side to side. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Ah, sorry about that. Yeah, it just gets a little warm. I have actually two computers under my desk, and my newer system actually runs pretty warm uh, every once in a while uh, when I get things going. Like, um, I'm using a, an AMD Threadripper now, and some of the heat exhaust sort of billows under my table here, so unfortunately it gets a little warm, which causes me to run fans, and then, you know, the mic goes well, bonkers. Uh, sorry about that, but yeah, for some reason I tried to optimize points or weld points really, uh, and then close holes. 
optimize points. And it still did it. I think maybe let's just try this. Delete. I'll do by the poly group. Yep, still no. For some reason it's skipping. Um, but uh, usually if, if that doesn't work, I do know there is this. So delete those curves. And I go BZ into Z modeler. You could, along the edges, I believe there's a curve that you can add. Uh, add to curve. How easy is that? And then you can probably go. I can't remember how to use this thing from properly. It's been a minute since I've used it. But generally you should be able to go around the edge and just add points and I can't remember if it's shift ah shift axis aligned. So from here to here maybe. Ah there we go. So you shift shift click the first point and then let go of the shift and click on the next point and it draws out. So you could use this curve to do pretty much the same thing and the curve will hold and then you could just just define your own Edge. So I suppose if I hit shift again here, uh, click down here. Ah, I see it. Maybe it's too close to the other. Uh, but I could probably just delete all of these as well. Uh, that I haven't tried. Just, just straight up delete an edge that's going across but you could do that and you could just probably remove them it'll still be an ingon uh, the face that probably doesn't let it come out of a, a, a quad and it would make it an ingon probably ZBrush is saying no and will not delete it so I think it probably will try to keep quad faces hey go on with money Nope, I'm not giving out even names. No, excuse me for a second. Nope. Go ask mommy. Hey, daddy's working right now. Go. Go. Go ask mommy. I'm sorry. Go on. Go on. Sorry about that. <laughs> so anyway, well, those those names are just. It's just so sad. So sad. But, you know, that's what happens when you already gave out two bags of M&Ms. Kids will go crazy. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, let's delete the curve. And I'll just go up and clean a few of these up manually. Because I'm sure as I'm taking out the edge, it's probably solving. Or either I can weld points and make sure that it solves each face so that there's no doubles or weirdness. And same as that. Yeah, so you could just slowly clean it up. This might need a little bit of fixing. I would probably have to use the Z modeler to add some points. But I mean, I could probably get it back and solve it. But if I wanted to, just straight up, just fix the geo, geo from go, which would probably be the best. But at least, you know, there's a couple of different ways to solve some of this, and there's a couple of different ways to probably Z-remesh it. Uh, I wouldn't say it was successful on some of the more forward faces, but at least on the top, uh, it pretty much tried to keep it together. But, uh, yeah, it still needs probably a little work, right? And, of course, symmetry, you know, you could add. But I think this object probably has some weird points to it, and so I'm not entirely sure if some of this symmetry would be totally good for this. Like I'm not sure exactly what that was, why these two are crossing. So I'll just delete the edge. There we go. Something's still under there. I'm not sure why, but yeah, I need to take that out. This looks pretty gnarly. So if they don't delete, I suppose that they're probably holding quad somewhere. Yeah. 
see I deleted something there and then I would have to stitch these faces here so uh, yeah, I mean you know Z modeler has got some really cool tools to use once you check them out uh, so if you've never used them try to use them I could probably bridge some of this uh, from here two edges da -da. Is it shift non-symmetrical it's non-symmetrical wonder why that is oh see it tried to make a face on the inside for some reason it's not pairing up right so you know what I'm just gonna do this we'll import it again because I think I just saved it out but if I'm not sure I'll go back to blender tab get this piece here uh, a couple of other kinds of cuts that I wanted to show you here just really quick um, it's really cool to do this, but uh, because most of these operations are, are modifiers, you know, they're, they're Boolean, advanced Boolean modifiers, like you saw me draw the box, you saw me do a sliced cut, but you can also extract geometry from this in a lot of ways by, I'm going to turn it back on, Alt-W, uh, I'm going to go into the same pie menu that I had, even destructive is fine, and I'm just going to choose box, but I'm going to hold control key and cut just like an expanse here, right? And I'm going to tab it and hold it, right? So now I can work with these using the little handles for the binding box. And this red color represents just basically a cutting device, right? So it's just cutting into the geometry. But if I hit X, I can also slice this off and come up with a new piece of geometry. So like if I double click here, right, this will become its own, right? And I could use this to, you know, my advantage, just along with some of the built-in, you know, um, hard ops features. If you have hard ops and box cutter together, uh, they work with each other pretty well. But I can um, add, you know, like a different modifier. I mean, depending if, if this was just like a kit bash piece or something like that, or a small insert that I want to make into an insert brush, I could probably you know work low poly, but also I can give these some nice smooth uh, bevels um, of their own. Uh, just selecting them, and then you know I'll hit the Q menu and do something like a C sharpen, and then I can hit Q and B again off of the hard ops menu, and I can set that bevel, right? And these are actually literal, you know, shaded bevel points, right? Because if you look at it, if you tab it and look at it, it's actually all of these uh, edges have become red, right? And so they indicate like a probably a modifier that, that doubles the, the bevel line. And um, I can always come back and fix this, you know? So like if I hit Q and B again, and I don't like the, you know, sort of hard, you know, s s overly soft edges, maybe too much, I can dial it back or, you know, increase it even more. But next time I probably do a cut, do know that, uh, do know that if I drop this down, and let's see here, I'm going to take this and just go right about here, right? Rotate it a little bit. Uh, there we go, along the Z. If I hit spacebar and bring this in, I can cut right into that. And if I did X, and here's another thing, if I hit T, I can use the T thickness. So I could create multiple cuts, actually, because this will leave a solid shape on the inside, and then it'll leave sort of a spacer around the outside, and then it'll we'll have our main object. So if I double click on this, I actually have like a little spacer piece of geo in between that right and then I could take and uh, scale something like this and have like another cut or something like that but I'm actually grabbing the wrong shape there we go and I could probably move it over it's probably not uh, aligned very well uh, let's see. 
So I'm going to take this, actually just select it by the face, and I can pull this down or something like that. Take these guys. And I should have been able to, instead of closest, uh, actually, hold on a second, global, and I'll do it along the normal. That way, my world space widget actually accounts for this angle because it's using the normal angle, right? And you saw the position of the widget actually changed. And then I could push this in. You know, and I have like a nice little cut piece, right? Uh, and as long as I tab out uh, to object mode, I can hit this, Alt W again, copy my geo over, come in here and get this little piece here that we had. And I think that's not copied over, so I take this and Alt X again, hit that symmetry. Should be in there. Maybe I have it misselected or something like that. That's part of that. There we go. Wrong object had been selected, but either way, is you, you you probably get it. I can make a, a cut with a sort of like a spacer in between, uh, and then mess with that. Uh, but I could also bevel these corners here, um, you know. And probably if I had worked this or have a little time more time uh, to work this, I'd probably smooth some of these out a little bit. Uh, add a bevel so that no, none of the corners are too overly sharp. But now I have to come back here and probably do the same thing again. Uh, hit Q. This time I'm going to go to operations and set that C sharp back up. Uh, which the B width seems to be about the same as what it was, but let's just make sure. Uh, operations C sharpen. Uh, and this I need to actually do that way. So we have our symmetry back, and then I'm going to select this cube. Uh, let's see, use that B width again, bring that back down a little bit. So not so so soft. Keep some of the sharpness, but have like just some nice, you know, sort of polished corners, edges. Uh, and then of course, I'm just going to hit A to deselect B, cursor select all of this. Uh, and again, you know, let's take a look at using something like that where it has a lot of cuts in it. Uh, and then I'll export it again. Wait for it. Same name, same settings. Uh, interesting thing that I can't go back to ZBrush for for this. Um, I tried it, but maybe perhaps in the future I hope uh, ZBrush could have a you know, proper material groups uh, for stuff, you know, where you can carry materials over from one app or another, or at least the material IDs, um, which I think you can do material IDs in, in ZBrush, of course, but like sometimes when I put materials on other things and then bring them back into ZBrush, they don't always hold, but uh, I could hold a material group, right? So just for example, like if I do this, I'm gonna show you one thing here. I'm going to select these pieces here. Oops, excuse me for one second. Uh, sorry about that. I had a message come in. Oops. So I'm going to grab this, this, or maybe just this for my uh, Alt M and put a material on it. Use something I like, like gray. I'll make this piece here like uh, proper metal. And then this guy, hit Alt M again, and I'll put uh, Kevlar. Kevlar is a good one. Kevlar is fun. So it's Kevlar for this inner bit here. There's probably like a cube there where we sliced out our object, and then there's a smaller cube still attached to the main object. So like when I change the material for these, you can see like if I do a different material, oops, uh, come on, there we go. Maybe something a little bit more noticeable, rough plastic maybe. So like you can see all of this main object plus uh, 
this little edge piece in here is still that Kevlar and the outside is rough plastic and then my third material here. Now see something like this um, actually works, I, for some reason I can't get it you know to carry that type of uh, material difference inside of ZBrush, I mean I, I could by its geometry but uh, once I applied this, you know, like say if I was to do it, bring it straight into Octane or something like that, uh, these materials are actually going to be definable areas where I could change up, you know, color or uh, different material uh, differences in between diffuse or uh, specular or something like that. But I can also bring this back uh, to ZBrush. So I'm actually going to export it again as I was before. Make sure all of these are go. I'll keep material groups on this. Even if, you know, just crossing my fingers. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and export OBJ, come back, and we'll just reload it. Uh, there we go. Now, let's see. Oh, actually, I think it's still writing. Is it still writing? Maybe. Let's go back. Import again. There we go. Ah, yep. See, it didn't want to do it. Here, let's try from a star. Hope thing, nothing got messed up. Yeah, doesn't like it for some strange reason. Uh, let's see. You know what? I'm actually gonna export. Wave front. Name it something else. And come back down. Grab the second one I saved out. Huh. There, hold on a second. Not sure why it's not. Coming in. Uh, I'll just initialize things. There we go. I'll start over. Right, and import. Where is my test guy? There it is. Hmm. Something in there it doesn't like, so I have to figure out why. Uh, da, 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 da. Export. Selection only. That's probably why. I think I didn't have it selected. Derp. Selection only, apply modifiers, uh, poly groups, material groups, and export. And we try again. It says it's there. Oh. There we go. Had to hit T. But as you can see, some of those bevels that I set from a, a B width actually held. Probably they're going to be shaded a little bit harder in ZBrush, perhaps. But, you know, I can continue doing things from here. Like if I wanted to add bits to it, you know, or kit bash further on top of this or something like that. So, I mean, just to mess with your shape language, I mean, box cutter is a really cool, I mean, you guys have probably heard me talk about it before, um, using Blender a little bit, I've probably acquainted myself a little bit more with it, uh, since the last time I tried to stream and talk about it, but, um, you know, it's just a really cool way to sort of build up some shapes. So last time around when I was doing buildings, you know, like, uh, I would just take something like this, hit B, Z, uh, and use the Z modeler to add extra things. Uh, again, I could probably try to clean up some of those spaces with tools in the Z modeler. But I think also I want to just go in here and grab an inserted uh, primitive. 
Uh, a lot of times when the primitives that I like to use, uh, when you hit M, I like to use the Q cube there, uh, which is really easy to work with. Um, it's almost like building a, a puzzle or something like that, you know, where uh, I need to do like a block out and I just take parts and start making them out of uh, cubes, you know, sometimes spheres or uh, other shapes, cylinders, um, but it becomes really easy to, you know, sort of manipulate uh, simple geometry. Because I can apply it, and I could just split mass points, and just, excuse me, and then I have just like a solid block to work from, and I can shape this any any way that I want to. Sorry, I'm gonna turn my fan a little bit. What? It's a little warm out in Los Angeles today. It's but I, I don't know what's going on. It's drier. It's supposed to be fall. That's what they tell me. But it's still hot like summer. It's crazy. At least the daytime is. You know, considerably, it is. Now, hoodie weather in Los Angeles, but not during the day. <laughs> now you want M&Ms? Oh, I'm sorry. I have a big bag of them. I should I should do like a, a M&M bag giveaway. <laughs> but you know, Halloween time. It's close to uh, Halloween, so my kids are trying to raid the candy that is for actually for. For Halloween already. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to look at this this way. And a lot of times I just manipulate verts by using a mask um, and then inverting it. And it's because I do that, like it's grabbing the other side as well. And then I can just move certain pieces. Uh, I'll move this piece up. would I want to do this so and of course um, I'm gonna explain this once again because almost similarly um, and if I wasn't clear before uh, in previous stream uh, I'm gonna show you guys just you know just like a basic cut using the boolean system inside of ZBrush right only in ZBrush so you could do this actually you could layer up a bunch of shapes um, and do booleans inside of ZBrush uh, and you can even use some of the same type of uh, insertable boxes that I was just using. So like, I've built a box and this is gonna be a, a large form that I'm gonna cut, cut away from, right? So of course I can hit the object, uh, hit the M, uh, or no, sorry, the I, IMM primitives here, right? And then of course inside of that insert Q mesh, or a Q cube, sorry. And I could just pop that right on top right and split it move it scale it maybe a little shorter this is where I love to use like um, the gizmo a lot and I don't want to overcomplicate things or any fi uh, edges that might get carried over when I make a union mesh uh, so I'm just gonna take a B C Smaller brush, pair that down, grab the edge, edge loop. Uh, I'm going to delete the edge loop and do it complete. Uh, and a lot of times, just so that I don't mess anything up, I'll even come over the verts, hover over it, and do nothing. And the same for the faces, just so that I don't make any, you know, misclicks or anything like that that might compress or collapse geometry down or do anything crazy. So, you know, just a uh, Take this, delete that, take that, delete that, take this, delete that. And what I just have is like a one by one by, you know, uh, rectangle, poly. Bring this down, right? And I can set up a couple of these, actually. Uh, take that, split mass points again. Stretch that out. I could even take a Z modeler again, go along the edge. I'm going to insert here and maybe here. Right? 
and so if I look at this I could just take this shape uh, and do Q cube actually or Q mesh uh, full step just this guy single poly yeah pull this down select this one pull this one halfway and you see how it's snapped there so I could use that snapping um, kind of to my advantage if you're unfamiliar with the Z modeler and you know doing any type of uh, uh, union mesh boolean cuts a lot of times you can come in here and on this menu the why I chose a full step as a full step would be one actual you know full step from where I started to extrude the Q mesh to the next point or the next edge or or uh, probably division right on the surface but if I pull uh, this menu up again and do something like a tenth step or a quarter step the difference would be something like this where it goes a quarter of the distance and then fills in the slope uh, just after that so I use that to my advantage a lot and and actually use it to sort of like boolean or you know not boolean but to bevel out a shape or create like sort of a beveled uh, shape uh, the unfortunate part, and a lot of times, I think it actually you probably have to go across faces and then do some fixing, but you can't bevel necessarily just one expanse. I think it needs there's some type of connectivity at the end that it needs. Um, I Joe explained it once uh, in uh, Ask ZBrush, so you might want to go back and, and check with the the wizard, but you can't take this and bevel and then just have like a single bevel I think it would actually do it all the way around right but I would love to just take that one and be able to bevel it but I think you need to set up probably some other loops somewhere so uh, let's see back either I can add or subtract that so just um, I'm gonna kick this guy all the way I'm gonna hold shift because I want to move this block all the way down to the bottom so I'm gonna hold shift and just click here on the arrow which will actually kick it to the bottom of your subtool list uh, as far as the, the shape goes um, and then of course you know if I wanted it on both sides I could do this now or later, but it's probably better if I do it now. And they both come out at the same time. Geometry, uh, modify topology, mirror, and weld along the X. But for this, I actually have to turn LSIM off and then mirror and weld along the X. Actually, you know what? Not along the X. Looks like it's going to be on the Z, I think. Uh, there's no magic. Alright. Yeah. Oh. Wait. Maybe I turned this thing around and got lost. Okay, so that's the front. So actually, I should have probably turned all of this around. So this is actually going to be. Because I can actually look at the bottom. Uh, for those that are new to ZBrush, I can look at the bottom. This blue line here, this hairline, is it's kind of hard to see. It's underneath the object, and if you can only see it probably if you have the turn the floor turned on. But that is always going to be the Z forward. Sorry, I'm just taking a look at some of the questions. Uh, how do I like the AMD? I like it a lot. It's a little iffy at first uh, for Threadripper, but uh, it is crazy fast. And I appreciate having the, the PCI slots. Um, for rendering, this thing is beast, beast mode. Uh, any Rendering and or any type of uh, uh, productivity calculations where, you know, if you have a good GPU, pretty decent motherboard with a thread ripper, you know, a lot of things, you know, can happen pretty fast, uh, especially like video editing or any type of um, uh, compression where you're saving out. So like a lot of times when I'm working, uh, using Camtasia or something like that, um, it's fairly easy to, uh, you know, cut a video. Like it only takes a few minutes, even if it's like 10, 14 minutes or something like that. It, 
it's about maybe a quarter to half the time, uh, you know, to, to compress all of something like that, right? But I've been working with it pretty smoothly. The only thing I, I have to say is, it, because it, I, I guess it's fast, I don't know, but like, uh, since I've stepped up to Threadripper, a lot of my Wacom drivers have been a little crazy. That's more of a personal critique, I think. I'm not sure. If, and sometimes in ZBrush, my, my Wacom tablet has been a little bit iffy, but I think it's more so the drivers more than the actual software. So it's kind of strange how that works, but... Uh, actually, you know what? For some reason, I don't know if I'm going to get a good... Uh, mirror over so I'm not gonna worry about it I'll worry about it after I cut it out of the geo anyway moving right along let me go ahead and do this so if I took this shape here uh, I'm gonna skip it down just one and I'm just wanna move all of these objects out of the way so this is my main shape here I'm gonna leave that alone and this shape here I'm actually gonna take and try to cut a few other parts out of and then we have this one here and this one here so this one I should actually shift down uh, now what I want to do is be able to do some of the similar type of cuts that I was doing in here uh, as I was doing in Blender but only in ZBrush using the union modifier or the boolean union mesh right so I'm gonna take this uh, and actually this will be the main shape so this becomes the start click here making this one this one will actually be taken out so I'm actually gonna subtract it and this one here, I suppose I could subtract as well. And then what I want to do is go over to the render, uh, and it, where it says render booleans here, I'll shift M on this in case my screen is too tiny. Render booleans under the render menu. I'm just gonna click on live boolean, and as you can see, it starts to take it out. Now the difference be, dip being between why did it, is it look totally cut away and empty here and here, is because this object is the one that I have selected, excuse me, and I have the polyframes showing, so it actually makes these little grid lines through it, right? Like horizontal grid lines through it. Um, just indicating that that's part of a, an actual smart group, I, I believe. So now, I mean, if I click on this one, it'll do the same thing, but if I take and hit Shift F, none of them will show at all, right? So now, uh, I could actually take this and notice the stacking order of this. This is like start, right? And two subtractive objects, right? So I'm just gonna keep going and make a few more. In fact, just to let you know, if you wanted to repeat a lot of these, you know, like an instance of a lot of these cuts, you could always just select the subtool and if you hold W, you know, just to bring up your gizmo, uh, you can hit control and just repeat it, right? And then reshape some of this, right? And so, as you can see, you know, just this becomes sort of a, a more complex object, right? And so I can, I can just build up on objects like this and cut it out of the piece. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I take a, and turn everything else off, just hide it. Like, uh, even if you're on the eye, you can, I think you can shift click and turn everything off and just selectively turn what you want on. Uh, but I'm going to take this shape and just go ahead and, and make a Boolean mesh out of it. So, right up here where it says Boolean, right under the merge menu, I'm going to make a Boolean mesh. I don't wor worry about uh, dynamic subdivision with this too much right now. I just want the geo cut. Right, because I'm gonna kind of work a non uh, subdivided way for now. Right? If I was really worried about the topology, I think I would probably either Z remesh it or take it somewhere else, and uh, or even not uh, leave same stay within ZBrush and just you know topologize it. I use uh, a lot of hand uh, topo that I do for a lot of things, and I just fix it out take it somewhere else Maya maybe um, but uh, it makes some really nice cuts and then you can sort of combine these you know, either with you know kit bash parts or other new geometry that you want to you know have to intersect so I'm going to take something like this maybe uh, 
grab another in you know uh, insert uh, maybe just insert cylinder and uh, split mass points again on that So a lot of this stuff uh, probably is, you know, within a classroom, a ZBrush classroom, I'm almost certain by now. But, you know, you can add different shapes through it. Uh, and then before you know it, you know, you have a customized piece of, of geometry, right? So I'm going to take uh, this one. This is not going to be a start. I want this to be in the same group. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit, shift F. This will be you know, are solid in the mix. I'm going to turn dynamic uh, perspective off. Let's bring this to the edge a little bit. Have fun. No. Uh, you could probably also look at its wire. Uh, oh yeah, because it's part of the Boolean group. That's why the polyframe looks so weird. Okay, that's fine. But um, what I was thinking is I could probably take this, move some of these loops in. You know, you could do some fun stuff like maybe uh, putting a bevel on this and making it a nice little beveled end cap or something like that. Uh, but that's that's totally possible. I, but for sake, I'm just going to leave it in there as is. Probably you're gonna to want to divide it a little bit so it's a little bit smoother. But for now, I'm just gonna show the principle of this. So okay, so just start group and three other objects, uh, two which are actually minus cuts, right? Uh, two which are positive cuts. Come here and actually just make a piece to kind of go in the side here. There, we place this just like a little inset piece. Right? And this is still part of this, so I want to work on it work on it individually, so I'm gonna split mass points again. That's why a lot of times um because I add peat geometry and split it. Uh, to build up mass on, on a lot of objects and or complexity. A lot of times I keep these um, shortcut keys handy uh, in my own UI. And of course what I do is I, I have them um, lined up at the end of my toolbar so that's why you know in my interface it looks a little bit different. Sometimes it works for me but maybe may not work for everybody. <laughs> so you know customize your own way. But uh, control, if you hold control, you can slide this menu. So just past like you know my active points and stuff, I have a lot of these set up here. And I just wanted like a quick go-to to be able to click and uh, do, perform some of these steps a lot over and over again. Um, so like split mass points, uh, merge visible, mirror and weld, uh, merge similar, merge down, group split. Um, a lot of the splitting tools I keep over here. Uh, make boolean mesh. So you know like. After I do all of this, I can actually just click Make Boolean Mesh, and it would actually make it. And where it's going to append it to is it's actually going to append it to the list of tools, and then I would have to append it back to a project, right? So that's what I'm going to probably try here next is um, appending something like that. I'm just going to pull this in. You know, good enough, good enough. Right there, maybe. Just give it a little space, just so we can see it. All right, so with something like that in mind, um, I'm gonna hit Q. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so now I've got everything in this group, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Uh, and I believe you can actually collapse these. So if you have a start group, you can double click it and collapse it. Um, but it's now time for me to go ahead and through the boolean menu just make boolean mesh and I'll come back up here and uh, Sorry under the subtool menu. I'm going to actually append it 
And as I said here, here's your U mesh test piece right here. And I can add it back. Uh, and here it is in the list. Which means that the start group that I had before, I can either turn it off, compact it, and turn it off. Um, I think for some reason my U mesh is actually. I'm going to shift click it up all the way, bring it down one. So here's our original piece of geometry that's sort of like the base stand geo, right? And then here's our secondary piece on top of that. They're both, you know, two different pieces. And then here's our start group from our actual um, Boolean operations that we were doing using the live Boolean. And then, you know, you just uh, probably either delete it or get rid of it. Uh, it's up to you, or keep it for reference, but you know, always in your tools you're going to have that new piece to work with. So I'm going to take this and actually I'm going to merge it down because I want to... Everything should be polygroups, right? They should have their own polygroups in them. So I feel a little bit more confident if I merge things and then take it back apart, um, just if I need to edit the whole thing. So like, let's say for example, if I take the original piece plus this piece, and I merge them down. Say OK. So I'll take this, and as you be saw before, underneath I'm actually facing the other way. I want probably the front of this to face, uh, or w at least one pick one side to be the front, right? So I need to rotate it along. So I'm just going to use the widget for that. I'm going to hold Shift and click on the outer ring of the widget tool, looking from above. And this will actually snap click to various rotation points. So like, you know, if I want a perfect 45 degree angle, I can go and I can get that. Or, you know, just a solid 90 degree turn, I can do that, right? And still, you know, on point. Every once in a while, if it gets off center, you can probably unify things and then get it back to center point. But I want to take uh, this guy mask this out, split this, so now we have our two parts again, this guy I'm done with, uh, so I can probably start just, you know, deleting, don't need it around, and this guy I'm actually going to mirror over, so now that we can work on our X, I can of course go, uh, sorry, back up to modified topology and hit mirror and weld along the X and it'll dupe it over right so if, if you look at the mesh a lot of this like still kind of gnarly you probably have to retop a lot uh, retopologize a lot of these pieces but some of them sometimes not and if you're working for something that's purely conceptual uh, where you're going to use it for like an illustration or paint over or something like that. It's a really handy way to make some like complexity in objects. So at least, you know, that sort of thing is pretty cool. And you can take uh, this and bend it and intersect it with this. Right? And of course, this piece. Um, we still had like um, some geo that mo multiple pieces of geo that make this up. So if I did something like um, I think probably an auto group would do it, and then merging auto group together. Uh, somebody asked me about this very recently, and I was kind of glad to show them. But uh, it's kind of a handy little thing. But going with a, a shape. Uh, and then working with the polygroups menu, of course, you can auto group these uh, and then merge similar groups. That way, when you do like a group split or anything like that, you can get the little tiny uh, parts, or you can split to parts perhaps, and have you know individual polygroups on on individual pieces that you want to later take and do things with. But um, that's kind of just an, an easy way that I wanted to show you guys of how to you know start off you know like if you were working in blender or something and you use box cutter how you can get it and come back to zbrush uh but you know not to say that you can't do a lot of um 
you know, very complex uh, Boolean operations inside of, uh, you know, four hard surfaces even, um, inside of uh, ZBrush, right? And I'm just working with primitives right now, right? So something like this could, could probably grow in, in, uh, in complexity. So I'm just going to take a minute and mess with it. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. I think we still got a, a solid uh, 40 minutes left. So let's just uh, mess around a little bit. In fact, I am going to play this music. you know something that's like a base like this I already have a lot of my own uh, kit bash pieces that I've made myself and or collected so let me see what I've got and we can see if we can just kind of make a cool shape with something like this you guys might remember these I made this set like uh, not too long ago Actually, on my gum road, um, this brush in particular is one that I think I made just after using a, uh, not Octane, I'm sorry, uh, using a Fusion. And I took the, the parts and uh, brought them into ZBrush and made a IMM brush out of it. But there is a light version of this brush, which I offer for free on my gum road. It's, uh, Actually, in my donation box, but you know, you guys can still get it, even if you know you didn't necessarily want to spend a whole lot of money on just like a small brush or anything like that. I think even if you hit zero, you should be able to get it. But uh, it's one that I shared with you guys. Uh, in fact, let me drop the link now. So if you look me up on Gumroad uh, here, I know this says $2, but um, it's probably pretty cheap. But there's the, a light version of this brush that I made for you guys. I need to maybe put it on ZBrush uh, Central, I think, in the repository. But along with a couple of other kits of mine that I sell, pretty, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, do check me out on Gumroad if you guys have the opportunity. So that'll be my, my moment of shameless promotion there. Make sure if you guys have any questions. Who was playing that, that tune? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's a, an artist by the name of Oshi. O-S-H-I. Uh, need you back. And uh, actually here, if you guys... You know, strangely enough, when I listen to a lot of music, I listen to music off of YouTube more than I actually do, you know, and from YouTube I go find it, but especially with a lot of electronic stuff that I like. There you go. You can try that out.
stuff that's like intersecting and this oop. don't try to change uh, inserts with your widget up or at least beware when you do so because if you do uh, like say if I had this one here selected and I just apply this one but I split it if I click on another um, uh, another insert it's actually gonna flip it and change it uh, to the one that you've selected, so just be cautious of that, so that you don't sit around going, oh, hey, where did my stuff go? That, that would have been what happened. I think this object is actually off sim a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it and just try to work it back. I'll mask that. Flip it over to the transpose by hitting Y, W. Bring it to the same face so it's even just like it is here. like this looks like kind of like a prop so I'm gonna kind of try it and go for something like this right it's a machine of some some sort like a maybe like a, a sort of like game style prop sort of you know, save point or something like that looks like that symmetry off on this. This is, again, where uh, using deformation is actually really cool. So like if I get, if I forgot to turn symmetry on, so if I wanted it, the object on the other side, here's exactly what I would do. It's just um, come and take a deformation mirror, get it on the other side, and then I think I'm going to have to probably adjust this because my object is actually off center a little bit. It's not exactly on the floor's uh, center. Uh, not sure how it happened, but it sometimes it does. I mean, usually I would just um, use deformation and uh, unify it back. But for this, I think uh, I'm just going to take, go ahead and do my mirror. Now that I've mirrored it once using deformation, I'll go to geometry, modify topology. Ah, uh, see, for some reason it doesn't it doesn't want to work right. You know what? That's okay. is X, and that is properly on the X that it should be on. Ah, I think. I'm looking at the back, that's why. Okay. There we 
go. Uh, and there it again. And there it X. There we go. It's hidden inside the geometry. So now, of course, I take this and mirror and weld it. There's my other piece. I'll mask that. Just bring that back in. Okay, so that's the start of a chunk of something. So earlier I did mention, you know, hey, um, you know, it'd be cool to take something and set it up in Octane, right? So let me just show you really quick because we only have about 30 minutes to do this. I'm going to show you just really quick how I would take something like this and put some material definitions on it. So the Geo should check out, even if it's triangulated or even if it's quad, most of these kit bash pieces, you know, if I look at them, they're going to be triangulated and that's quite alright. They're non-subdivided pieces, right? Um, even our Boolean piece that we made in here has some tries in it that it solved the, the Geo pretty much for me. It's got a mix of, of quads along with tries, so, but I'm not going to worry about it. Just I want to each separate object to be separate um, so that I could put like a different material on it, right? And the same would apply if I was going to, you know, uh, come over here and render and uh, let's say if I turn live off and now that I've already done my boolean cuts and stuff uh, in ZBrush, what if I hit here, I would go to Keyshot, right? And you would want all of these in your subtools to be different uh, subtools so that you could put, uh, you know, easily drop a, a material on it. So I want to actually just make sure. One, two, three, four. That's that. And that's that. Uh, this will be this. This will be that. Okay, so I've got enough separate pieces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this really quick. And go into Geo. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm just gonna uh, create it like a, a merged copy of it, right? So I'm gonna merge visible. So only the subtools that you know are checked and visible from the subtool list. I'm going to merge them together. And then I'm going to take that merged copy and I'm going to save this out. To the desktop, that's fine. Then, I'm just going to stop into Blender really quick, and the cool thing about Blender that I can probably add to this conversation is you can open more than one instance of it. So I'm going to leave this here, I'm going to open up another one, and then get rid of the default cube that's from the uh, save default file. I'm just going to hit X, delete it. I'm going to import uh, the OBJ. Uh, what was it called? I think I called it demo, didn't I? Yep, that's it. Right. So with this, I'm just going to start selecting a, a piece, you know, like a part, and I'm just going to hit Alt-M and put like a, a material on it. So I'm going to take that. Main 
body of this will be something else like uh we'll do rough plastic. So if I was to hit Shift Z, I could probably see the difference in materials here. And this is just like a really quick um, render view from Cycles, which is also a really good renderer, by the way. So I can see which parts still need a material on it. So I'm going to click this one here. I'll do worn paint for that. So that should work out. There's another piece. Take that and add a material for that. Aluminum. All right. So then I'll select everything again. And I'll just take this and I'll export it out again. I'll just save over the same file. So I'm gonna file export wavefront obj. Material groups. Uh, most of the faces should already be triangulated if they are, you know, from before. So I'm not going to worry about hitting triangulate again. Uh, and selection only. No smoothing groups or anything like that. Cool. I'll keep the same poly groups. Cool. So that should work. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. On the desktop as the same, but maybe I'll call this one uh, one underscore two, so that way I don't overwrite anything, and just write another OBJ. All right, so now I can put all of this away. And I'll come over to a default scene that I have set up inside of Octane. Now let me explain a little bit what this is. This is a render target. And when I click on it, as you can see here in the viewport, everything that I have in my scene actually comes into render view, right? And I can turn it. And I, this is a file that I saved as my default file for myself. It just has like three small black body, uh, with the left and right being at 45 degrees or so, uh, and it's a, an emissive black body uh, light, right? And then there's a ramp behind. And uh, I think as I explained it, this HDRI that I have saved in here is a custom one that I made myself, just driving around in downtown LA in the late afternoon. I wanted some afternoon light, uh, you know, with a lot of concrete around or something like that. You know, a lot of different colors working, you know, from different areas. Uh, so I just added it to the file. And this is a node-based editor. So from this render target, what you need is uh, probably a camera, a daylight environment and then this is the HDRI node here if I can zoom in and show you which is attached to these nodes the sky color and the sky texture right uh, sorry I'm just taking a second to answer a question sex you said all my kit bashes you snapped on a sphere my parts, but these are looking perfectly snapped on the sphere surface. Is there any soft body technique? Um, if I was to add some stuff that was to a soft, like like, are you t are you talking about like a divided sphere? Basically, what I'm doing is I've just like taken the kit bashes that I put on the object that I made as a base. I just put them on and just arrange them using the widget tool, right? There's there's nothing divisionally that's happening. If they're if they're smooth, it's probably because they were already smooth when I made them, and so their smoothness is probably in the wire. But I'm just straight up like applying it to the normal of an object, sizing it and scaling it and positioning it. Okay. Does, does that sort of answer your question? I hope. Cool if so. All right, so from my render target, I have, uh, have what's called a placement node, and this placement node is basically when I place an object, where I can move it and how much I can scale it. So these are basically, if you think of 
R dot X is the rotational X, right? So I can turn the object uh, along the X, Y, and Z, and then the scale, so S, X, X, or S, Y, S, Z, which will be the, basically the, the scaling of the, the height. And pretty much my, my ratio is locked, right? So like basically if, I'm, if I scale one of these up, everything's gonna move, right? Uh, and then they're transformational. So in other words, basically transform X, transform Y. So in other words, the object can be probably stretched out uh, X, Y, or Z, uh, and that's how that goes. Uh, and then I have a group. And now the group is the interesting part of this because if you're arranging um, multiple groups and multiple placement objects, you use basically placement to do all of the rotational scaling and transform, uh, and then all of your objects, if they're associated with each other, they go into a geometry group. Uh, any of these nodes are pretty much, if you can remember that their name in short, you can probably access them by right-clicking in the node editor, all items, and then just everything is uh, alphabetical, you know, arranged in an alphabetical order, right? So, like if I needed to add a mesh, I'll add a mesh, and I'll go and I'll find our object. As soon as I can remember what I called it. <laughs> Just now. Sorry about that. A lot of stuff on my desktop that I need to clean up. I've been working for like two months uh, on some concept stuff and haven't had time to take everything and uh, clean it up right. There we go. So I'll take that and uh, basically when you when you choose the OBJ that you want to open and put into a node, um, you have options, you know, whether or not it's for scale, you know, like uh, length unit, uh, meters, or what have you, uh, smoothing angle. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to not subdivide it, so this subdivision can be set at zero. Um, you know, you have edges and stuff that you can set, um, a little bit of smoothing options and stuff like that, specular, glossy, and... Uh, and diffuse uh, material types are all checked, uh, and then the texture types, if you have those, right? So I'm gonna uh, not worry about inverting anything, I'm just gonna click on K, and there's my OBJ, which you cannot see yet, but I'm gonna move it over here. And because I, I save this as a default scene, the kind of uh, you know handy things that I can do is I can already just take the OBJ and hook it up to the placement, and boom, there it is in my scene. It's a little small, Scale might be a little bit different, but I can scroll wheel, you know, like middle mouse button the down, and and then you know just roll in. It is basically sort of the toggle. Uh, left mouse button is basically you know uh, panning. Right, right is actually rotational. Right, so already I can see that this is sticking through my plane that I've made, so I can already go to the placement. Uh, and one is I can scale this object up so that we can see it, right? And as you, you can see already a lot of the material definitions that I had when I worked uh, in Blender. So in other words, I just went from ZBrush, did some Booleans, Blender, did some Booleans, ZBrush, did some Kitbash, back to Octane as a solid object. But here's the difference. All, all of this is pretty much a, a, a solid, uh, you know, all of the parts are manifold parts. Um, and the divisions that are happening that I, uh, by material are kind of cool because all I need to do is here above the viewport is I could select the entire mesh by clicking here and I could see all of the materials that are associated with that one you know solid combined mesh but I can also pick um, areas by material so this little gray sphere here with a color picker does the material I can click it I can change the color uh, and I can also change because it's uh, got specular on it, I can change the specular. Right? Uh, even some objects you can change to from glossy to a specular material and it would look more like glass. Uh, and if I have a second here, we've got about 15 minutes after I'm explaining this. I want to actually show you guys another file, uh, which is sort of the end game of something like this. You know, like I always love to show you guys something that I've been working on over the week, where really. I've had more time to work through some of these uh, and show you, you know, 
not only through through demoing it, but like, you know, what what is the payoff? What is the the end game of all of these, and why am I talking about it? So, let's uh, take this object and move it up. Now, I could mess with this, uh, the placement of this through the placement node, and you know, sort of tweak it, and you know, sort of get it there. You know, waste a, bit, a little bit of time, you know, getting it just right. You know, every artist I think does that. But uh, very quickly, I just wanted to grab this, take this, move it up. Oops, sorry, panned out a little too far that time. There we go. I just move it and adjust it myself. There we go. That looks like it sits on. Uh, I can also rotate it. So maybe we're not looking at it straight on, but more I'd have an angle. Because pretty much what I want to do is I, I want to keep everything um, in view from sort of a front angle. Um, pretty much, you know, like I would take close-ups and I would sort of move in here so that we're not looking at our HDRI, but pretty much our, our field of view is going to be spot on to our subject. So it just looks like a nice, you know, soft ramp you know, with all the shadows. If I turn it too much, then I start to see, you know, my HDRI, of course. And I could, of course, put in a backplate, you know, into the object, but I just want, like, a nice studio shot, you know, something like, maybe like that, you know? Uh, and then, of course, a lot of these materials, you can put other things on it. Like, so, uh, you know, just like if you were working with any other renderer, like probably Marmoset or even, you know, sometimes the same uh, in ZBrush or... Um, you know, V-Ray or any other, any system that has its, its render engine, uh, a render engine attached to it. Uh, specularity I can take and I, I can either use a color, and the same for diffuse, I can use color, but I can also use an RGB image. Uh, and these would, these changes would be reflected in the nodes and I can go back and edit it. But, you know, a lot of times a lot of these have some really cool lighting. Uh, and just uh, speaking of lighting, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, Look at that. So I have an HDRI here. Uh, let's say if I cut this and actually use something else, right? If I detach it, you'll see that there's some of the lighting uh, scheme changed and it looks almost like it's being hit by a twilight, you know, like a like a, an afternoon twilight orange, something like that. So if, if I look at this and I click on the daylight environment, I can change the daytime uh, or even the date, like let's say, month, uh, what is it, it's October, oh, that's not sorry, October, uh, what's today, the 20th, 20th, I'd say about 3 o'clock, almost 15, so almost 1500 hours, but I have just a little orange, depending at the the angle. Maybe dial it back a few hours. I use about 1,300 hours, 12 to 1,300 hours a lot, just because I love these 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 oranges, the flush orange and yellow highlights of like an afternoon sort of twilight, uh, magic lighting hour, I guess some people call it, and you can catch some interesting angles and stuff like this really get picks, gets picked up on met uh, metallic objects and stuff like that. Um, also, you can mess with nodes, today, but you can uh, use like something like a cavity dirt uh, mixed, uh, and you can actually add those nodes onto your object. So like, um, that's a little bit easy spec, gray, Kevlar areas, just trying to look for something that had little bit more. I'll hook it into the none spot and see if anything changes. But, you know, you can use a cavity m with mixed material. Like, this is a diffuse material, but I think there's a, a dirt texture and two RGB colors, and it's connected to a mixed texture. And what that'll do is, in a lot of times, uh, it'll kind of give it some richer, like, almost AO, but, like, just cavity dirt. And you can set that cavity dirt up uh, in some regard. And if you're using Substance or something like that, or Quixel, um, as long as your object has, you know, 
all of the same like specular workflow uh, maps attached to it. You can pretty much just plug and play them. You know, just drop like an RGB image on here, uh, and they're pretty good to go. And you know, with most people using a Pascal card, uh, if you're using 1060, 1070, 1080, um, you know, Octane seems to fly pretty well with anything with a 70, uh, 1070 and above cards. They do, they do fairly well, performance-wise. I mean, it, it's, it's taking almost no time to get like a pretty clear shot. You know, all of the noise is being taken out of it, and it's just smooth object plus material. So as you can imagine, if I build this up, if I take a couple of more hours and I come up with a design, come up with some interest, uh, interesting, you know, uh, design choices and pieces, and pair this together, you know, you can create something like this into iteration, you know, fairly quickly. Right, uh, and then you could render it out, and you could use this piece um, for something like a render. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this. Save. Always got to save your work. So I'll save this Octane file, and then I'm going to open up something that I've recently been opening, uh, or working on. Uh, this is, I can't say exactly what it's for, because it's some work stuff, but I'll give you guys just like a little sneak peek um, on stuff that I've been working for, uh, working on. Uh, also, you know, probably on Instagram or Facebook I might have posted this a little bit, uh, just like a snippet. But I'm going to go ahead and, in my recent, open up a uh, project that I've been working on. Now this has a lot of moving parts to it, so sometimes it takes and it needs to like read the entire project and compile it. But I'll click on the render target so I can get that going. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, this Krups Romu. <laughs> yeah, sometimes there 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 are doubles that get on the inside, and you have to remove them. That's sort of a pain in the, the butt. Like every time I, I don't know why, but like sometimes if I'm using Blender and ZBrush, don't get so many doubles. Blender and Maya, or ZBrush and Maya. And a lot of times I'll sometimes get doubles and I have to, uh, where I missed click something or missed uh, bridging something incorrectly and it put a double face on the inside and I have to go clean it. Or do like a, what do you call it, uh, uh, clean mesh inside of my... Sorry, this takes a sec. Hopefully it'll be right on the money. If I go over, I might go over about five minutes. Okay, there it is. So here is a scene that I am working on between Blender, ZBrush, and Octane. Uh, much in the same way that we've been talking about. Only in this case, I'm using primarily one new tool, and that is KitOps, uh, which is by the same makers of uh, HardOps and also um, uh, HardOps and, and BoxCutter, a uh, friend of mine, uh, Jerry Perkins, also known as uh, Master Xeon 1001 um, you can get his add-on. Uh, I'm gonna mention this before I get before it escapes me. There we go. Jerry has a Gumroad page here, in which you know he has uh, his box cutter tool, uh, other tutorials that he's done, uh, kit bashes, and so forth. And uh, check him out. Watch his stuff. Uh, he's the hard ops tool, of, you know, by he, uh, Chip Walters, and also a programmer by the name of Proxy, have worked out using a sort of really cool insert uh, tool for Blender. Uh, so I would check it out. K I T O P S. Kit ops. Um, this is a scene basically that I've compiled together, uh, where I built it in Blender. 
uh, added materials much the same way that you just saw me do. Um, only I have been making inserts as well for Kid Ops uh, as a trial during its its beta run, and so a lot of these I are sort of like a mixture in between my own inserts that I've made, uh, some that I've used from the app or the add-on app uh, to cut into the floor and design the floor, uh, as well as using some displacements. Uh, maybe you might have seen me in previous streams use displacements. I think uh, I'm still adjusting this one because there's a mid value here which is causing a gap. But uh, Gemma Jurabayev had a, a great uh, collection of uh, displacement maps, uh, sort of like a sci-fi industrial stuff. Um, and I used a few of his parts and a few, one of his displacements for sort of the wall uh, and the ceiling. And uh, I have a scene that I need to build out, uh, which is in a, a bay like this. And uh, I can't give out too many details about it, but uh, those are the tools that I have used to create it. So like ZBrush, Blender, Kit Ops, Hard Ops, Box Cutter, Marvelous Designer for the drapery here that I'm sort of turning into a not silicone, but sort of like frosted plastic uh, drapes uh, built along a frame just out of Blender and popped right in there into the scene. And so I'm, I'm setting this up as a stage that I can make uh, multiple views from. And so I've edited the materials just ever so slightly here and there, uh, just so that I can get a nice clean shot for um, doing a, a type of uh, paint over. Uh, and then basically the empty at the end of the bay there will be taken out, uh, blocked off, uh, and I'll, I'll take and I'll paint uh, beyond this point. So we're, we'll just have like a solid indoor environment here. Uh, but the cool thing about doing something like this, is, especially for painting, is that I can pick my position uh, and my composition. Like if I have uh, photo bashing elements that I'm going to add, or if I want to draw or paint anything in, I can pick the POV that I want, uh, or that the director wants, or art director wants, uh, and then, you know, I can just set up my shot, right? I can place all these props. It's like basically a working stage that I can use. And then, you know, I can, after I do all of the work in Photoshop, I can give it to the art director, and who in turn gives it to a director. Uh, and then, you know, they, they make determinations on the, the, the creative venture. But, uh, yeah, it's really fun to set stuff like this up, uh, using lights, um, using this daytime environment here again you know same deal it's like just after maybe two three o'clock and uh, getting some twilight lighting and then uh, pick this up and then I'm using the internal lights to sort of offset that so that we can get a little bit brighter and I may duplicate these lights if you recognize them they're the same uh, from the uh, they're the same as the, the ones that I had uh, in my default scene but I just replicated them to look like floor lamps because the ceiling is dark enough to where it's on the inside. All right. Oh yes. Plus, not to mention, there's a few small parts here. These crates here and uh, the air conditioning on the, the top here. Uh, it's just some bashed pieces from uh, Mr. Bulgarov, which are always handy to have. Uh, you know, really cool stuff. But you know, inserts and then just you know, these were a 2D plane that I think I extruded out. And then I, as soon as I built my room, I just added, you know, elements one by one and duplicated where I needed to. So this is sort of the the end game, as I mentioned, uh, as to where all of this was going. And then I just uh, make an environment out of it. So maybe perhaps next time I come on, I'll have a painted piece of this to show you as a uh, as an example and sort of show you the process leading into Photoshop uh, where I take some of this uh, 3D business and then make an actual illustration out of it. Cheers! Alright guys, well, I think we're at the top of the hour for six. Thank you for joining me. Have yourselves a lovely weekend. Uh, I think I'm going to do the same and go cool off. Have some coffee, which is almost melted by now. <laughs> Alrighty guys, thanks again for joining me. Uh, have fun. And have a good night. Cheers.